well, we you did talk. A, you did a show with Garrett on Friday, but I think yeah, but that, that was by before, the time that was, you that was before Vince resigned, though. Yes, by the time you had done that show and and wrapped everything up, about forty five minutes later, it was announced that uh, that Vince had resigned. Nick Khan informed employees that uh, quote I wanted to inform you. Vince McMahon has tendered his resignation from his positions as TKO executive chairman and on TKO board of directors. He will no longer have a role with TKO Group Holdings or WWE. And uh, he's out. He's, he's gone. Out. He's, he's there gone. are he's no done. McMahons involved in WWE right now. Isn't that kind of amazing in a lot of ways? It is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who would have thought like three years ago that we would come in and like and like they would all be alive, you know, and, and there would be no McMahons in the company at all. I mean, granted, Linda left on her own was never coming back. You know, I could see, you know, Shane, obviously, you know, um, I mean, Shane technically is like sort of can be, um, you know, a special wrestler if they want him. You know, I mean, he's not like out, out, out. And Stephanie might be able to come back and might, you know, but yeah, as of right now, none of them are involved. I um, mean, Shane hasn't been involved as far as like, uh, you know, as far as being an executive or anything like that. And God knows how many years. But um, yeah, that's that's the minor part. I mean, the whole. What were your thoughts when you read the lawsuit? Are you kidding me? Actually, on on that topic, because we haven't even we haven't even talked about the lawsuit. Well, no, I've talked a lot about it on different shows, but I will say that uh, I read all sixty seven pages of the lawsuit, and uh, that was like one of the first things that I did when I had time after it came out. And today they did the press conference after the show, and Triple H was asked about everything. And he claimed he has not read the lawsuit. So he's That's trying to what say, he claimed. So he's trying to say that he's absolutely oblivious to his job? Is that what he's saying? I mean, look. I, I mean, I, listen. I mean. I, I don't. I mean, there's a part of me. But, you know, he's in a terrible position. Okay. And I, I, I like the guy, obviously. Okay. But. I mean, there's just, you know, I have not read the law. I mean, like, can you come up? That was that was about as believable as that, that time when uh, Julie Hart confronted him. Remember that? Oh, in, yeah, in, Wrestling uh, with Shadows. Oh, I knew nothing about it, you know, like that. I mean, that that was the believability level of that. But um, that, you know, Paul Levesque is, I mean, he's a part of the story, obviously, because he's the son-in-law. He was the one at the press conference um, who didn't say anything. Um, but you know, it's, it's a minor part of the story. I mean, Vince McMahon is the story. Uh, John Laurinaitis is the story, you know, John Laurinaitis, man, that, oh God, I don't even know what to say about that. You know, it's just like, although, you know, it, it, it's, you know, between, I mean, the law, I mean, the, like I said, in, in the lawsuit, there are charges. You know, as far as could they be embellished, obviously it's going to paint Vince out and John Lauren Ice out and the company out to be the worst thing. And by the way, you know, as far as this lawsuit goes, um, you know, there, I mean, there's so many things. But I mean, like, have you, is there any, because the, here's, here's one of the big questions that I have no idea the answer for, and maybe I'll ask around. But um, why did he not make the second payment? Because my gut says if he made the second payment, none of this comes out. I mean, what kind of hubris? Well, I I think. I, I mean, I mean, I I can usually I can usually, um, I mean, I look. I've been following Vince for forty plus years. Okay, and I knew him and all that. I usually, whether I agree with him or disagree with him, I actually do pretty much understand how he thinks in most cases, and I do understand. Like I told Garrett. That, that one of the things with Vince is that um, he does believe in a contract that you, if if you're in, if I'm under contract to Vince, he believes that I need to live up to it because I signed a contract. If he signed the contract, he does not believe he needs to live up to it if he doesn't want to. That's his, his that's always been his mentality. I mean, it, it goes back, you know, decades. To, I could give you Yes, he's, he's very examples. bad with, he's very bad with contracts. But you asked me the question, so I'm going to answer. Yes. I think... His claim is when this all originally came out in the Wall Street Journal. Yes. The the entire story came out, and uh, it involved her. 
Absolutely. And so I don't know where I read this. It might have even been somewhere in these 73 pages, but, you know, I I think that he figured, well, if it came out, she must have talked. She must have broken the NDA, and therefore I won't pay any more money. I oh, I do believe, obviously that's the reason sure. that, he, that, that he came up with. I'm just saying, like, okay, so he ra- he rationalized it. But, I mean, as far as, like, judgment goes... In his entire career, in his entire career, and he's made a lot of mistakes, okay? That could be that. I I, I think that's the biggest mistake he ever made in his entire career. I would think that most everything in the lawsuit were among the bigger mistakes he's ever made. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, the stuff, look, as far as uh, many, many things he's done that we do and don't know are probably bigger mistakes than that. But, I mean, as far as for his legacy and for the company and for everything like that. Because you got to remember, people think the company's scot-free or anything like that. The company's involved in this lawsuit. And the nature of the lawsuit is, you know, I mean, yes, the, the main perpetrators and the key perpetrators are Vince and John Laurinaitis, but the company is involved itself. And again, like, the com- it's a very powerful company and suing them is very difficult. And it will probably be, you know, looking at the track record already of uh, the the new company, you know, Ari Emanuel, it will it will probably be settled um, for the obvious reason that can you imagine? Can you imagine this one going to court? I mean, even even at, with the jury, I mean, it's like even if they and they of course they will do everything they can to discredit her, and they may be able to discredit some of her things, but but. You have a jury. They're going to see those text messages, and there's a lot of stuff that's probably not there. And they're going to know who, you know, corporate office, officer number one is, and all of these things. That's all that would all come out if there was a trial, if it's not settled. And I, like I said, I expect it to be settled, and I don't expect it to, you know, the worst stuff to happen. Because if, but if there is a trial, um, and there's a jury, I mean, you you saw the award that 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 was just in the Trump case on Thursday. I mean, that's not like minor stuff um i mean i I, who are they going to be sympathetic towards a young woman who you know i mean there's gonna with this with this description and everything like that even though yes vince will probably if he had if he if he you know is called will probably um deny it happened and laurenitis will probably deny it happened but those text messages are killers for their credibility because they're out there discussing it um I mean, this is this is brutal, and the company again is liable. Like this is, you know, I mean, there's there's, especially if the company actually does nothing, as far as, because um, they're going to have to explain how this happened in the in the offices, you know, and that she was employed there, and John Laurinaitis was her superior, and all this was happening, and Vince knew the head of the company knew. I mean, this is this is damning information, even if we. It's, it's but anyway, that's just another. Well, point. I think that the the thing that is going to be uh, at the end of the or not near the end, and it was near the end of the the filing. There was this there was a section about detailing. Okay, these are the various reasons why we believe that this NDA that she signed is unenforceable, and you know they had like four different reasons why it was unenforceable. If if it were deemed well, 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 well the thing is, is when they said unenforceable is because he stopped payment. He didn't pay by the, I know, but by she, the date. Of, I, I think the the point was that you know whether forget all the payments like this NDA that I was forced to sign, it's unenforceable mm-hmm. anyway. It's it's irrelevant whether I signed it or not. It's unenforceable. That's and their claim. Yeah, I think that if that claim, if if there's a ruling that that is is accurate, you got to remember that there's more than one NDA. And if it comes out that all of those NDAs that Vince has signed are unenforceable, I mean, there's there's going to be a lot of people that can tell a lot of stories. Okay. Well, and I think we'll, I mean, there's a well, lot a, that we don't know about who knew what and and uh, you know. Well, uh, well, we 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 know we know we know of of um, we know that there we do not know the identities, although obviously some people have ideas. But um, aside from Rita Chatterton, we do not know the identities of any of the women that, um, you know, and uh, Janelle Grant that were involved with the NDAs. Um, 
obviously one of the things that they are trying to do is to get with this suit and getting publicity for the suit is to get other women to come forward. And that's another thing that would be absolutely devastating for the company is if other women come forward, because once you have established a pattern, um, you know, that puts the company in even it, it's it's even worse for the company. But as far as like the the validity of the NDAs, one of the things Joe, that Biden signed in is that NDAs, when it comes to sexual assault, are not um, valid, essentially. But this law was not in effect during any of the NDAs in question. Other, well, let me think about this one. I don't know. I, I don't know how the Chatterton thing would work because the NDA was signed after the Biden law, but um, but the case was so far back. So that's a, that one. I'm. I actually probably a lawyer would probably have to do a better job than me on this one, but um, because the 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 law was signed, I believe, uh, 2022. So any NDAs after 2022 that deal with sexual assault are in fact invalid legally now but um that wouldn't that wouldn't be you know the women from 2004 that doesn't seem right it's not a retroactive law it, that doesn't seem but you're right. right no 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 it it, it shouldn't be right you're you're 100 yes it should not be right so uh vince is gone and uh i mean there's a lot i don't know if you did you talk about slim jim with garrett um, that was just breaking at the time. We we basically heard the um, the original thing, and then they came back. You know, obviously uh, today they came back today, right? This morning. Yeah, they uh, they pulled their spawn. Well, they 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 said that their sponsorship was I forget the term that they used on pause or something on like pause, that. On pause. On pause. They were pausing their sponsorship because of what happened. And then they had a meeting with Nick. And Vince was uh, he stepped down. They claimed. And then uh, all of a sudden they returned, and so you know Slim Jim was. I think they they uh, said their uh, single biggest sponsor that they had ever had, or something like that. Uh, they were a huge sponsor of WWE and have been it, forever. Is it, is it, wasn't oh god, I'm trying to remember. Were they, were they the biggest? I, I don't. I, I, I think don't that remember. that's what they said they were the biggest. But regardless, wow. they were a huge huge sponsor, if not the biggest, one of the biggest. And and, and 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 for decades. Yep. And them them pulling out. I mean, it may have accelerated uh, yes. the ousting of Vince McMahon. And uh, especially because something like that, when it comes to sponsorships pulling out, you know, it's a domino. You know, I mean, as we've seen it many times, one pulls out, then lots of them pull out, and they could not afford. When the first one indicated they were pulling out, they had to make the move. I mean, uh, basically, Vince was going to have to be out no matter what. I mean, from this from this suit. But yes, this probably sped it up by days, a week. I don't think it could have gone more than a week. But, um, and there would be other sponsors who would have pulled out if if not, um, if Vince was still there. It, it's just, um, it was completely impossible for him to stay in that position with, with this out and the media coverage and things like that. So, um, you know, I don't. I, this is it's, not. It's, this it's, is it's not meant that, to be making light of the situation, but I do. Uh, I do watch these old Raws every now and then to review shows, and uh, these Slim Jim. I mean, for for thirty years, you know, these Slim Jim commercials, year after year, show after show, they're still up on the WWE Network. These Slim Jim commercials, and it is amazing to think that at the end of the day, the final ousting of Vince McMahon. Involved yeah. Slim Jim pulling their sponsorship. Yeah, and the final ouster of Vince McMahon, like the the ouster a year ago. You know, I mean, it's the irony of all this is that for years and years and years, um, you know, Vince was you know again always felt untouchable. Um, you know, and I mean, I just like I just think about it, and I don't, I you know, again, I I talked about this with Garrett. You know, I talked to Jerry McDivitt. You know, at fairly decent length when he retired um right after he retired and and granted you know if this had anything to do with it obviously he's not telling me that you know it's like i i, I saw the iceberg coming i got to get out it was like i'm 75 years old and you know it's like uh, do i really want to be working this hard when i don't need the money essentially was you know and and it made all the sense in the world and but you know when you look at this you know i mean it's like Vince, you know, Vince always had, and Jerry McDivitt is in that lawsuit, you know, as far as 
Vince McMahon essentially bragging to her that I've got this guy, Jerry, you know, who um, makes bad things, bad people go away. Makes bad yeah. things and bad people go away. Yes. That's well, not what bad. was written. Yeah. That's like, like, so he was supremely confident, as long as he had Jerry, that anything could happen. And he does not have uh, Jerry right now, you know, unless he pulls him out of retirement. And um, I don't know that that would be, you know, if I'm Jerry, I don't know that this is the thing I want to come out of retirement for. But, well, you know, we'll see on that because there is a there is a long loyalty between the two of them. And Jerry made his whole career on Vince. So, um, but I don't, I don't know. And, you know, I don't, I don't, we'll have to wait and see on that one. But, um, I mean, again, like the guy after all this, the guy who took down Vince McMahon was Vince McMahon. You know, um, not, it wasn't any of these other people, any other people promoters anybody any you know anyone the person who took down vince mcmahon was vince mcmahon unless you want to say the person took vince mcmahon was uh janelle grant um but it really was vince mcmahon more than more than she was the she spoke out um and because again the first even the first one from from uh you know when he left the first time it was essentially due to the investigation or due to the the, the board knowing about this and him kind of, you know, having to come out. And the reason they did was because she went forward, you know. So it's like she she was the one. But, you know, you, it, it was really him, obviously. So uh, Vince's statement said that uh, I intend to vigorously defend myself against these baseless accusations. Look forward to clearing my name. However, out of respect for the WWE Universe, the extraordinary TKO business, its board members and shareholders, partners, constituents, all the employees and superstars who help make WWE into the global leader it is today, I have decided to resign for my executive chairmanship and the TKO board of directors effective immediately. So that came out, of course, late Friday afternoon. That's when they like to... Uh, well, that was going to be that was going to happen, you know, as far as like, you know, when he resigned, his resigning being on a Friday is happens to be because the lawsuit dropped on a Thursday, not because it happened to be Friday. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, what do you expect him? What do you expect him to say? I mean, as far as but I mean, there's again, it's like. Like he he's not going to get back because he doesn't you know, before he had the voting power to get back. And he doesn't have that voting power anymore. Like when when this thing signed, well, I, one of the things I mentioned was, you know, if something happens to Vince and he's booted out, there's no coming back. And this one, there's no coming back from most likely. I mean, I never want to say 100 percent, but because um, I, I I just think that it would be a horrible move by um, Ari Emanuel. But I mean, let's face it, like there's still a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people who still have to answer questions. I mean, as far as like. The, it, it, you know, the corporate environment, who knew? And, and again, uh, the people who knew, and obviously people did if Vince is out there, you know, freaking tech people knew, right? But even if, even if people knew, they can't really go and complain about Vince, okay? It's, you know, I, I do get that aspect of it. But Ari Emanuel also, um, with this stuff, you know, how much... You know, how much he knew. I mean, did he know these sort of details? I, I mean, I'm going to say no. You know, it's benefit of the doubt for him. He know the sort of details. But he did know that it's a guy with a bunch of NDAs out there. And he, you know, this was his call to bring him back. You know, I mean, he could have just said, look, we've made the sale and, and you're no longer welcome here anymore. Um, you know, unless there was a secret deal that part of the deal is, is that, uh, you know, he... He stays in some form, um, but he didn't get to stay in creative. So that tells me that Ari did have the the pull. Although now, of course, we have the idea, the Ronda Rousey thing of, well, he was secretly in creative because through Bruce. And um, that's yes, another. Ronda Rousey uh, today, actually, which, of course, was uh, a pretty good indication she wasn't going to be a surprise in the Women's Royal Rumble. <laughs> yeah, really. She uh, tweeted out, Bruce Pritchard is basically Vince's avatar. If he's still around, Vince still has a hand in the business. Vince was still running things through Bruce when he was, quote, gone before. So she yeah. was not messing around on that tweet. No. And um, I guess that tells you what she thinks of Vince McMahon. Yes, that does tell you. Yeah. I mean, a couple, you know, w w you know, right at the end of her run, 
she remember she did that tweet about how these um you know aging executives or whatever it was who think that they understand type of a thing and that was meant at vincent bruce um and um but she didn't say the names of this one it was like direct direct hit on bruce um and bruce is you know an interesting one with vince Kahn because you know aside from vince did anyone you know did anyone you know i don't want to say i i know people hit there who who um who are very high up who do think very highly of bruce so it's not like he has no allies but when um when you know bruce was you know on the list of people when vince resigned the first time you know it was like the people who were expected to be gone you know bruce was very high in that list as was kevin dunn and the thing that i was told at the time you know about a month later it's like what do you think is is bruce going to be gone kevin dunn and it's like for wall street reasons it doesn't want to we don't want to look like there's this mass you know you know departure so it will roll out very very slowly hey if you love this clip have i got a deal for you wrestlingobserver.com do you have a commute do you work out at the gym do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today well WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.